Artificial intelligence today is nothing more than clever programming and smart technology. And that's it. So the only intelligent part of anything or any machine is the actual engineer who either developed the software or the hardware. That's about as intelligent as, as it gets. So hi all and welcome to Engati Engage. Today we have the pleasure of welcoming Dean Grattan to our interview series. I am Drishti Shah from the Engati team and would like to begin with a quick intro of Engati. Engati is the world's leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform available across 14 channels with 25,000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. We run the Engati blog and video channel which receives upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest, Dean is a technology influencer, analyst, and futurist. He's also a columnist for Technically Speaking, where he dispels the rumors, gossips, and hype surrounding new technology. He is a passionate thought leader in his field with a social reach of over 2.5 million. Dean continues to provide an authoritative, published, and vocal presence and has an unregulated passion for technology to include AI, ML, IoT, big data, smart homes, energy, digital transformation, and much more. So, hi, Dean. We are really happy to have you on Ingati. Hi there. I'm, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, before we start with the first question, remember to subscribe to the channel for more exclusive content from thought leaders around the world. So, uh, how is conversational AI changing the customer service scenario today? Um, conversational AI, for me, is not a good thing for the customer experience. It, um, for me, it's devastated the co uh, consumer experience or customer experience because um, with a, uh, a view to reduce employment, to uh, reduce uh, work heads in the, in the, in the business, you have uh, automated systems which will take you through various processes to vet and, and push that out to, to well, for ultimately, if they can be answered with, this, with, a, with, a, with a bot of sorts or conversational eye, then you don't have to get through to a call center and speak to a human. But for me, it hasn't worked out that well. And it really is frustrating because they even use it in marketing here. I'll, mm. I'll get a, a call, a random call, and it's so convincing, it must be a recorded voice. Um, hello, I'm Angela. I heard you've been involved in a car accident. Is that right? No. Uh, how do you know this? Is that right? Yes. And was it your fault? Yes. Seriously? Is this the is this good as it gets a conversational AI? Because really, and, and you, you have um, you have big operators of mobile and uh, landline operators in the UK. And then you will have, uh, again, an automated system. How best can I direct your call? How can I help your call? What is it? Please explain to me what I can do for you. And you'll say, oh, I want to uh, cancel my subscription. You want to upgrade, is that right? No, <laughs> seriously? So no, I don't, I'm not a big fan of conversational AI. But uh, like, for a first uh, point of contact with the customers, like uh, basic trivial things that the customer would have. So would, would that be a, a good thing to get on to? I understand then the, the, the rationale behind the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it reduces the, the, the number of head, the head count at the workplace. I understand that. Right. I understand reduced costs and whatnot. And if problems can be solved immediately mm -hmm. through an automated system, then that's great. But I don't think the technology is it's fully there because as humans, we just sometimes ramble and waffle and, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Ah, oh, no, 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 it's this. And the systems don't really understand that hesitation, that, that block, that, ooh. Okay. And I think, I think it will come yeah. um, and become equally more frustrating. I didn't mean. <laughs> but that's my personal experience. So how will businesses operate post-COVID-19 considering the need for digital transformation? Well, firstly, digital transformation is inevitable. It's ongoing. So that transition will happen. I think the impact with post-COVID uh, will be 
um, ultimately how we work. And I know that's another question you're going to bring up at some point, the future of work. And I think now it's become twofold. It's future of work and future of engagement. So whilst we have future of work and the, the robotics and artificial intelligence and the impact of employment and people's salaries and whether or not uh, humans are necessary, et cetera, et cetera, um, I think that's a consequence of post-COVID um, future of engagement because whilst there is, I mean, next week in the UK, uh, Johnson will make, uh, Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, will make some announcement regarding um, how uh, lockdown will be eased and what are the conditions of that. Um, we still have to observe a two meter distance rule, um, but the future of engagement. So I think what's, what's brought about, um, which I think has been a positive thing, what's brought about is people working from home. So people who can work from home, and um, it, it really does raise questions about our infrastructure. Um, there was a period when this first started, everybody working from home, where the infrastructure, both fixed and uh, wireless, was overwhelmed by these people being at home. So I think there will be um, a need for um, the, these telecom giants to really beef up their, their infrastructure to, to ensure that in the future this can be supported. Um, if, it, if it happens again, God forbid. Um, but yeah, so post-COVID, I think the future of engagement, how we engage, how we work, hopefully companies will learn that um, well, actually, the people who did work from home did a great job working from home, and maybe we can, maybe perhaps employees can work two days a week from home or three days a week from home. And maybe they got child support. I mean, that is, it, I think it just changes the whole um, the mindset. So you have both future of work and future of engagement, and I think that's really has happened post COVID. That's what will happen. So actually, we also have um, a new ebook, which is like getting to new normal, say work from home to return to office. So we have just, uh, you know, published this ebook and I would okay. like, yeah. So if anybody wants to, you know, read that, that there's a link in the description below, they can go to. Okay. So, uh, how will AI and automation change our way of living? And will smart homes become mainstream anytime soon? So, I'm a bit confused. Yeah. AI in the home. Well, AI, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, I struggle with the word AI, uh, AI, but I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, AI in the home. So, smart, smart homes. It's been, you know... So probably you don't even know this, but smart homes have been, the, the actual concept has been bounced around since the 1950s and 60s. It's been around for a long time, the notion of a smart home. Okay. I think it's become more tangible today because of the technology. Yeah. So for example, in my home, I've got um, a Nest mm -hmm. a thermostat, which is directly linked to um, our air source heat pump, very eco, um, and the air source heat pump uses what's called weather compensation to determine the ambient temperature. Based upon the ambient temperature, it will heat the temperature in the radi wet radiator system accordingly. So if it's bitterly cold outside, then it will raise the temperature in the water, and, and conversely, if it's really mild outside and the temperature internally is not high enough, then yeah. it only a moderate heat. Um, and likewise, I have, uh, I, I won't say it out loud because she's right there. So uh, I will her, use her to, I can also use her to set uh, the temperature in the house. I can actually set her, use her to set the eco temperature in the house. And also the, um, uh, the lighting, for example. So I think smart home technology today is tangible. As for automation, I'm not sure what you mean by automation within the home um, for smart living. Yeah, so I think, living. yeah, so like you mentioned, uh, the devices or the uh, voice interaction devices that we have, and uh, it can, you know, uh, remind us on uh, doing our calls or if we are leaving out of the house or, uh, you know, uh, have a temperature set for a different time 
and okay. yeah so that is how something okay. yeah. well yeah well certainly i mean with the, with the nest uh, products i set up uh, heating to come on monday to friday say from six o'clock mm. uh, come uh, 10 o'clock in the evening it drops um when i'm away from home uh, based upon my mobile phone not being in the house it becomes inactive or it becomes it's, no, it's set to eco so it just moderately runs and I think the temperature if, if we're away for two weeks and there's there's, uh, there's no one home and uh, really a lot of cold happens and um, there's always a minimum temperature of four degrees Celsius so it will always maintain that within the house so it's never never going to be your pipes are not going to be bursting and whatnot. So there's automation from that. And likewise, actually, when we are away from home, uh, with the lighting, it gives the impression that someone's home, the lights are turned on and turned off and so on and so on. So that from an, from an automation point of view. So I, I had artificial intelligence, robotics and automation in my mind, and I just thought from a, from a factory view, automation. So that's, I got confused. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, moving on to the next question that we have is, what are your thoughts on the broad level concept of the future of work and what are the key tenets and technologies that will drive their adoption? So, we've already touched upon the future of work mm-hmm. and I think the, the, the key tenets and that, I think still it needs to be addressed because we don't really understand the impact of automation and robotics. Um, I think a, a lot of uh, what's happening in the press is a lot of sensationalism regarding robotics and automation. I mean, we still have uh, car manufacturing with robotics doing all the bulk of work, but there's, there's still humans involved assembling the minor details of the of the car, for example. Um, and of course, we assembly of a computer, you still got the um, um, the actual computer uh, with OCR recognizing the actual device make sure it's being manufactured correctly and whatnot. But if something is flagged, it still needs human interve- uh, intervention to actually send it to check what's going on. So I, I, I think it still needs to be understood and fleshed out, plus the evolution of technology and how that works out, um, and ultimately where it's going to go. Um, I think it's a, it's a slow work in progress, the future of work and the impact of employment and um, workers' salaries and so on. It's, a, it's still a big question what's going to happen next. Um, I think from a, from a robotics uh, point of view, an automation point of view, I think with, in light of uh, what's happened with COVID, I think medicine and healthcare, I think having robotics um, and having um, yeah, robotics involved and automation involved, where you, you can, uh, I mean, for example, there's, um, there's a, with the artificial neural networks, you can actually detect patterns in, say, breast cancer. Um, and this technology is better in some cases than physicians. Um, and I think, likewise, if that was applied also to uh, detecting coronavirus in, um, in cells and whatnot, then I think that is probably the next step. That's the next big thing to happen, personally. Um, yeah, so I think wait and see, primarily. Yeah, that is true, actually, and I, I agree with you, uh, because what will be coming tomorrow, I think we can anticipate to a limit, but not totally predict, because... Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the problem with the press. It's just, they just like to sensationalize, oh, we're all going to lose our jobs tomorrow. No, we're not. No, we're not. It's true. It's just made. Let's see what happens. Let's see how technology evolves. Because ultimately... The technology that we develop, humans are still developing that technology, and ultimately we need to tell technology and machines what to do. Yeah. Humans still need to do that. Yes, that's true. We're not obsolete quite yet. Yeah. So do you have any other thoughts that you would like to leave our audiences with? Yeah, I just I, th- I think I touched upon this with you guys. Um, my point seven uh, was to... Um, really address artificial intelligence and what I understand artificial intelligence is today. Um, again, we have, again, press, like to sensationalize, all doom and gloom, what's the point of the human race? We'll have the Terminators coming in, extinguishing humans, because what's the point of us and all that rubbish? Because like I said, ultimately, we need to tell the robots and things what to do. And that's what I come to my point. 
Artificial intelligence today is nothing more than clever programming and smart technology. And that's it. So the only intelligent part of anything or any machine is the actual engineer who either developed the software or the hardware. That's about as intelligent as, as it gets. And even with our artificial neural networks identifying patterns and it being capable of learning, well, that's because some engineer has actually developed the software to instruct it as to what to do. That's it. That's artificial intelligence. That's actually great. And uh, we, well, even if we think of uh, machines getting smart, it is always a model that we have trained the machines to be. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Dean. Your insights were really valuable and I know our audience is really going to enjoy this interview. So okay. if you stick around for this long, our ebook, Getting to Normal C, Work from Home to Return to Office, is out and available to download for free. Okay. So check out in the link description below for more details on how to get this ebook. We'll, do we'll be thanks. back with a new episode with a brand new expert, so stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one. Thank you so much, Dean. Wonderful. You're welcome.